Welcome to the HR Chat Show, one of the world's most downloaded and shared podcasts designed for HR pros, talent execs, tech enthusiasts, and business leaders. For hundreds more episodes and what's new in the world of work, subscribe to the show, follow us on social media, and visit hrgazette.com. Welcome to another episode of the HR Chat Show. Hello, this is your host today, Bill Bannum. Organizations today are facing complex post-industrial age challenges that have HR at the heart of them. And these include designing hybrid work approaches, redesigning job roles with AI in mind, and navigating through ongoing huge societal movements relating to inclusion and mental health. And in this episode, we're going to consider the concept of systemic HR. And joining me on the show today is the amazing Kathy Enders, Senior Vice President, Research and Global Industry Analyst over at the Josh Burson Company. Kathy, it's my absolute pleasure, no honor, to have you on the HR Chat Show today. Welcome. Thanks, Bill, and thanks for having me. Super excited to talk with you. So I'll be on my reintroduction just a moment ago. Why don't you take a couple of minutes now and introduce yourself to our listeners. And for anyone out there who hasn't heard of it, I can't believe that's the case, but just in case, for anyone who hasn't heard of the Josh Burson Company, tell them all about that too. Will do, will do. So Kathy Enderes, SVP of Research and Global Industry Analyst at the Josh Burson Company. A little bit about me. Um, if you hear an accent that's kind of a mix between American and, and some other things that you can't put your finger on, that's because I'm originally from Austria, um, but lived in the U.S. Uh, for quite some time. I uh, live in California and have been there for almost 25 years, lived in London before, but originally from, from Vienna, from Austria, where I started working and, and lived for quite some time as well. Um, my my career has been uh, pretty interesting. I'm actually a PhD in mathematics, which is my, doesn't, but I swear I'm not going to be the weirdest person on earth <laughs> because of my mathematician. Um, I started my career in management consulting with uh, some of the big four management consulting companies and then went in-house, was leading talent and org effectiveness in very large organizations. And then uh, for the last few years, I've been working on research and um, advisory on all all the topics of HR, HR technology, um, the whole area of uh, talent, talent acquisition, learning and development, you name it, basically the whole kind of gamut of all of those kind of things. Um, And um, the Josh Person Company, we are uh, the world's most trusted HR advisor, as we see that. We um, we are uh, providing research advisory and also professional development for HR. Um, And Josh Person, if you have heard of him, uh, many, many people have. Um, he has been doing this for the last 30 years or so, um, and we're still at it and, and still not slowing down and, and um, work with um, HR technology companies as well as um, corporate HR departments on improving work and improving uh, the world of, of kind of employee experience. So that's a little bit about me and about the company as well. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Uh, so... Listeners, if you haven't yet heard my conversations with Josh, check out episode 600. That's a joint episode with Josh and with Dave Ulrich. And there's a separate episode with just me and Josh, which I think is around 595, something like that. So so please do check those out. Um, by the way, Kathy, my other half uh, was brought up in Graz in Austria. Beautiful place. Ah, what, what, yes. what an amazing country. Oh, awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Very cool. So I I guess my next obvious question for you is, what's it like to get to work with Josh on a regular basis? He is so well respected in the industry. I love him to bits. What what, what is he like as a colleague? Oh, it's fantastic. I mean, uh, if you've listened to him or if you've met with him, he is... um, the most uh, approachable, but yet the most, the smartest and most experienced person that I've ever worked with. So um, he loves actually ideating. So every day when when you have an idea, that's his favorite thing. Or when he has an idea, then we just get on the phone and we actually live very close to uh, like physically together, but we usually only meet on video. It's just 
the way of the world, <laughs> actually, how, how it goes. Um, but we talk pretty much every day, and he's always open to ideas, always has lots of ideas. Um, and um, I just love it. It's very active. It's very um, um, interesting um, and uh, lots of exchanges. And every day, kind of, we, uh, we come up with new things, new ways of uh, supporting our customers, supporting the market, and changing the world of work. So it's it's amazing. It's a dream. So when I got to chat with Josh on on this podcast, uh, given that I knew that part of that was going to be used for a special episode, episode six hundred, I think it was, um, it got me thinking about you know why am I doing this? What's the legacy of the HR Chat Pod? And and a question I asked of Josh was what what does he hope his legacy will, will be you know when folks are talking about him in 20 30 years time what, what does he hope that legacy will be uh, as someone else who's extremely respected in the industry i'd love to throw that one to you if you don't mind but why are you doing this what 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 do you hope people will say about you and, and your efforts and your work in in years to come you know i'm i, I love this question and um i um on my on my LinkedIn profile, on my profile, usually um, when you see that, I, I state there that I'm passionate about making work work better for many many people, and that's kind of what I'm I'm working towards. So um, I feel that we're, we're supporting, of course, HR departments and the HR leaders and HR technology companies, but really, in the end of the day, it's uh, in service of supporting the world of work and every employee, every person really on on Earth to. Um, make their work a little bit better. So if we can uh, impact every person um, in the world, really, a little bit, just making their their work, their work life, because we spend so much work uh, t- time at work, of course, um, making that a little bit better, helping them accomplish what they want to accomplish, uh, be who they want to be, um, enjoy what they're doing at work, uh, because most people don't. And I think everybody has a right to do that. So, so that's what I'm powered by. Thanks for listening to this episode of the HR Chat Podcast. If you enjoy the audio content we produce, you'll love our articles on the HR Gazette. Learn more at hrgazette.com. And now, back to the show. Okay, so uh, your hopeful legacy is to help everyone on earth. Not a bad legacy yeah. if, if you can manage that. Good work. <laughs> <laughs> Aim high, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Let, let's get into the main focus of today's conversation now, if that's okay. And uh, that's around this concept of systemic HR. Uh, can you can you start by explaining what this concept is? Yes, of course. So uh, as we look at... Um, the problems that that we are all facing, I just talked about making work better um, at work and in HR, we are facing lots of different challenges uh, that are really unique to to this moment in time. So there's four things that we are facing and why we thought systemic HR is actually needed today. And we, we embarked on a very big study. So uh, four things that are happening. First, the labor market is getting more and more challenging for everybody um, uh, around the world, whether you're like I just talked actually with a group a very large group that was located around the world, but most of the people were in Budapest. And when I said, do you feel uh, labor shortages are there? They said, absolutely. I mean, we are, I'm in California, um, wherever you are in the world, basically most of the HR departments, most of, most of the teams say we just can't find enough people and it's just getting worse and worse. So that's, that's one of the reasons why we said, well, something is changing in the way, has to change in the way that we operate HR. Second area, organizations are changing a lot too. Every industry that we talk with, every company we talk with is transforming. It's merging with another industry. If you're a retail company, like for example, you're also going into financial services, you're going into healthcare, you're going into like other products and services. And that's happening with every industry. And at the same time, within organizations, Companies become more and more agile, and they become um, they they work much more in cross functional teams. Meanwhile, the way that we set up HR is very functionally oriented, very siloed, not very cross functional, not very agile. So this is the second thing. The third thing, of course, that's happening is AI, and it couldn't be a podcast where we don't talk about AI, right? <laughs> I don't think we have had any meeting with any client or anybody where we don't talk about AI. That's going to impact how we operate HR in a significant way too. 
because HR is changing and HR technology is changing, but then every job is changing. And what's the role of HR to support the organization to, in these kind of massive changes of operating models and job changes? And the, third, the fourth area actually has to do with employees. Every employee is now looking to um, looking for more from their company. So looking for a better work life, having more say in the company's products and the strategies and the offerings. Um, so the concept of employee experience, we call this now actually employee activation, where we can activate the voice of every employee to say, elevate how much impact they have. Meanwhile, all of this going on, HR departments, the way that we have run HR departments is actually from 1995. The, so 30 years ago, almost 30 years ago, the traditional HR service delivery model set it up as an HR service organization where we say, and Josh calls it the 80s IT department where somebody has a problem, they uh, an issue, they call it in, um, and we work off that ticket, right? That's how we set up our HR departments. We said we have a service delivery organization, HR operations. We have like each of the centers of excellence that are supposed to like focus on talent acquisition, learning and development, talent management, total rewards, diversity, equity, and inclusion, you name it, basically all of these silos, these domains. And then we have local HR business partners that are supposed to work with um, business leaders on localizing anything that the HR, um, like the HR department sets out to do. Well, in, in this world where every problem that we are hitting is actually cross-functional in nature, and I'll bring up just one of the, the problems that, that we hit, for example, skill shortages. Everybody sees them, right? We talked just about AI. Everybody says, well, how can we find enough people that have kind of this future-facing AI skills, for example, in our organization? Well, the people don't exist, so it can't just be a recruiting issue, right? It also has to be a reskilling issue because maybe you already have people – in, this, in the company that have those skills? How can you retain the people that you already have? How can you create a better employee experience? Maybe you have need to have new uh, re- compensation solutions for them, give them better rewards. Maybe you need to focus more on inclusion because they don't feel like they have a say in the, in the organization. All of those problems that we have, skills problems, talent problems, they're all cross-domain uh, solutions. So we need to think about HR in a very different way than the 80s IT department and much more in an agile problem solving kind of consulting way. So that's kind of what we wanted to study there and what we set out to study and where we discovered um, systemic means basically it's not uh, like disconnected parts of the puzzle, but really connected pieces that all are in service of solving the biggest business problems uh, that the business encounters. So that's kind of, in a nutshell, what systemic HR is. Fidelo Inc. is a consulting firm specializing in improving human performance, and we're proud to support the HR Chat Podcast. We help identify strategic competencies and behaviors that drive results. Our team offers an HR web software to manage systems, reports, and data for HR people that need the best insights to make the right decisions and achieve better results. Learn more at Fidelo.com. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, so you've got this wonderful systemic HR model. You're, you're getting out there. You're sharing it with the masses. You're educating the masses. Who's using it? Has, has anybody used the, the concept so far? With Yes, we wouldn't say that it's a model or this uh, framework if nobody was using it. Of course, for us, it's always who has applied it. Many companies have applied it, but in many different ways. So very important to say, and I'll bring some examples in a minute. Very important to say, this is not a rigid model where we say, well, the old service delivery model was like this. And now here, ta-da, here's the new one. Because what we realized is every organization is actually customizing this model to their organization, to their business priorities, to their culture, to their leadership. So um, one of one of the examples is the Lego group. And of course, we all know and love Lego, right? The Lego pieces, the Lego toys, who um, has actually on the on the surface, their uh, new H, uh, systemic HR model might not look all that different to what they used to have, but they um, really uh, brought in 
um, some very uh, like groundbreaking ideas, how they changed, for example, the role of their HR business partners. They said our HR business partners, they did a study and they realized their HR business partners were actually not spending enough time on the cross organization enterprise problems that most um, that, that were most important to to the Lego group um, they did a study and said how much time could could our HR business partners spend on uh, maybe like digital transformation of Lego for example which is a cross company thing and of course they had their HR business partners set up by each of their business groups they have seven different business groups and they said you know what we can't operate uh, the same way that we used to have, where we have a senior HR business partner that leads a team of more junior HR business partners, and they all do what kind of each of these business groups want to do. We have to pull them together into cross or organizational teams, and the senior most HR business partners now function like consulting partners that actually don't have direct reports, but they are the most senior kind of client advisors to their business partners. So although it might not look all that different from a structure perspective, the support that Lego gets for the most pressing enterprise problems is significantly different. So that's that's one example of what they did. Another example is um, um, MasterCard, of course, a U.S. financial services or fintech company who has also changed their or is on a journey basically to changing their HR operating model and their HR operating system, as we call it, significantly around um, actually a two year journey. They set out a two year journey where they said the first year they focus on within the organization, how they are changing roles to make them much more product oriented, much more consultative in nature within each of their groups, within each of the total rewards group, the talent management group, the learning and development group. And, and the second year that which they're in now, they're changing cross um, domain collaboration, basically to really address the problems that the business have, uh, because they were growing so fast in terms of employee headcount. They said our growth exceeded the capability that the HR department had to support the business changes that we, we, we have to do, because of course, with AI coming in, their products are gonna change, their services are gonna change. And so they said, the business is already very agile we need to be much more agile in HR as well. Another example is um, New York Presbyterian, a very large healthcare organization on the, on the, in New York, in, in the U.S., um, that um, really thought about, they were actually on the whole journey from the least effective um, HR service delivery all the way now they're moving into systemic HR where they are measuring the success of their HR organization actually by the success of the business. So usually your success measures in HR are kind of, I don't know, cost to fill, for example, for hires, or it could be how many people like your learning programs or um, can, can you the, any of these, maybe employee satisfaction, employee engagement, those more internally facing measures. But they said, we have to, uh, we have three priorities as a business this year. We have to digitally transform our offering. We have to expand our footprint and we have to provide increase better, uh, like patient satisfaction, basically with our healthcare services. And they said, the chief HR officer said, we measure our success of the HR organization by accomplishing those success measures, not internal success measures. They might be important for us to know if we're on track, but for the business, we're only successful if the business succeeds. So a complete mindset shift, for example. Many different uh, other organizations, TomTom Tom is another one who are, of course, uh, um, based in the Netherlands. Their business has completely changed. If you're familiar with them, they used to be a... Uh, a, a provide kind of GPS tracking on your like personal devices on your running watches. I had one of those as well for running. And now they are more in the mapping business. So they're more competitive with Google Maps, for example. And so com business is completely different. And meanwhile, their HR department was very static and their chief HR officer said, we can't like we can't afford to do that. The business is moving very in a very agile way. And so basically they broke up their service delivery model completely. And now they only have four very flat teams that look nothing like your typical HR silos uh, because every one of these teams is just basically focused on either creating, uh, designing products, delivering products, 
or uh, these are uh, basically providing consulting services to the business or communicating to the business. So very cross-functional, very agile team structures that they have moved to over the course of two years, by the way. So um, this is not a one-step thing. It's not a, a simple journey. Excellent. Kathy, I am very sad to say already we are coming towards the end of this particular conversation. Oh, wow. um, I've got a lot of respect for you and I'm going to hound you for more interviews in the very near future, I suspect. But oh, before we wrap up for fantastic. today, thank you. That, it's great. Okay, I've got that on record. Everybody, Kathy just said that would be fantastic. Okay, good. Please. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, before we do wrap, wrap up for today, though, for, for those HR leaders out there who are looking to implement a systemic HR uh, practice within within their workforce H- how can how can they connect with you and learn more yeah so me personally you can find me on linkedin of course kathy enderis uh, you can probably see my 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 name um online um so please connect with me and of course if you want to follow joshperson.com um josh's site we have also actually a, a separate page on there where you can learn a little bit more and then i'd love to engage with you and and support you basically on this journey to systemic hr wonderful well that just leaves me to say for today kathy you are a super awesome human being keep doing what you're doing thank you very much for being my guest today thank you so much bill i really appreciate it it was fun (laughs) and listeners as always until next time happy working Thanks for listening to the HR Chat Show. If you enjoyed this episode, why not subscribe and listen to some of the hundreds of episodes published by HR Gazette. And remember, for what's new in the world of work, subscribe to the show, follow us on social media, and visit hrgazette.com.